Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is the 2024 AP Chemistry Exam free response question number two. This is the solution guide to the 2024 exam. So let's take a look at question number two. Question number two was a chemical reaction between this maleic acid and sodium bicarbonate. You can see what's being produced is two moles of carbon dioxide gas, some water, and an aqueous salt here. And you can see it starts with student combines equal masses of the maleic acid and the sodium bicarbonate. And the student determines that 0 0.0114 moles of carbon dioxide is produced after the reaction goes to completion. So we want to calculate the number of grams. So take those number of moles, the 0 0.0114 moles of carbon dioxide, we multiply by 44 grams per mole, that's the molar mass of carbon dioxide, and we get 0 0.502 grams of carbon dioxide. Nice easy start here. Then we get to A2, and A2 says that we have a pressure of the carbon dioxide gas of 1.25 atmospheres, the reaction is at 20.0 degrees Celsius, and we wanna know the volume of this gas, which means we're gonna use Pivner, the ideal gas law. And we plug in 1.25 atmospheres times the volume equals the 0 0.0114 moles of carbon dioxide gas. We're still using carbon dioxide gas. We have R, the universal gas constant of 0 0.08206, and the temperature needs to be in Kelvin, so we have to take those 20 degrees, add 273 to get 293, and the volume of carbon dioxide gas was 0.219 liters of carbon dioxide gas. Then we go to problem B. Problem B says the student performs a second experiment that's identical to the first, except the student grinds the chunks of the solid in the powder. And it asks in number one, what happens to the surface area of the reactants? The surface area has increased. When you've gr grinded it in the chunks of powder, there is a greater number of surface areas. And number two is asking about what's going to happen to the time required to dissolve the, sol the, the solids. Is it longer than, shorter than, or less than in the first experiment? And we have to justify based on collisions. So the re required time would be shorter in the second experiment than the first experiment. Since there are more surface areas, there are greater frequency of particle collisions of reactants and a greater probability of successful collisions. This is gonna lower the reaction time. It's gonna speed up the rate of the chemical reaction here. Then we get to B3 and B3 says when the reaction is complete, will the volume of carbon dioxide gas at the end of the second experiment, when we've grinded up these reactants, will it be greater than, less than, or equal to? We're gonna say it's equal to. The reaction will still proceed towards completion, producing the same amount of products since the same mass of the reactants was used. We haven't changed the mass. We still have a limiting reactant. The primary difference would be the reaction time would be shorter because the reaction rate is faster. Then part C, we go to this, uh, we're trying to find the limiting reactant. In trial three, That you can see they gave us the mass of the maleic acid, the mass of the sodium bicarbonate. They gave us the moles that we produced. So what are we gonna do? Uh, there's, there's a couple different ways to do this problem, but let's start with the 1.543 grams of the maleic acid. We divide by its molar mass of 116. We get the moles of maleic acid. And then we look back at the chemical reaction. You can see the chemical reaction. There's one mole of maleic acid for every two moles of carbon dioxide, which means for every one mole of maleic acid, we're producing two moles of carbon dioxide. So 0 0.0133 moles of maleic acid, we're producing or that's what we're using, we're going to use 0 0.0266 moles of carbon dioxide. That's going to be an excess because you can see in trial three, we only produce 0 0.01489 moles of carbon dioxide. So just by double checking, we're going to take the grams of the sodium bicarbonate. 1.251 grams of sodium bicarbonate, we divide by the molar mass. That's 0 0.0149 moles of sodium bicarbonate. We look at the chemical reaction for every two moles of sodium bicarbonate, we make two moles of carbon dioxide. So that means for every 0.0149 moles of sodium bicarbonate, we make 0 0.0149 moles of carbon dioxide, which is the exact amount that we produced, which means the sodium bicarbonate, the NaHCO3, is the limiting reactant. Then part D, we go to uh, thermodynamics with entropy, delta S, and it says the reaction has a value greater than zero. That means the entropy is positive. And they want to know, using particle level reasoning, why does the entropy increase as the reaction progresses? And since there's two solid reactants producing a gas, a liquid, and aqueous products, there's a greater amount of dispersion of particles in the products. 
and the arrange therefore the arrangement of the particles has increased significantly from solid to gas to these gas liquid aqueous products. And so the delta S is going to be positive. There's going to be more entropy. And then E says the student claims that the reaction is thermodynamically favorable at all temperatures because the delta S is greater than zero and the reaction is endothermic. And we disagree with this because we go to the equation delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. The delta H is positive since it's endothermic. The delta S is, is positive. Sorry, the delta S is positive. The delta S is positive. That was a little mistake right there, but I corrected it. The delta S is positive. It's, we're going towards more entropy. But the negative T delta S is negative at really high temperatures, which means it's favorable at high temperatures. But at low temperatures, the negative T delta S is not going to be very significant, which means the delta H is going to be positive. That's going to drive the reaction. The enthalpy is going to drive the reaction, which means the delta G value is going to be positive or not favorable at very low temperatures. We go to problem F. Problem F goes into kind of an acid-base reaction, talking about this malic acid. Malic acid has two protons. It's H2, C4H2O4. Therefore, it can give away, donate those two protons. So we have a Ka1, we have a Ka2. We want to know what the pKa2 value is, which means we are going to do the negative log of Ka2, negative log of 8.5 times 10 to the negative 7, which ends up giving me a pKa2 of 6.07. And then they are looking for a buffer solution. The buffer solution of this value is 7. And we're going to use this, this conjugate acid, or sorry, this conjugate base and acid uh, ratio here. And so we want to go to Henderson Hasselbach's equation, which is pH equals pKa plus the log of the A minus over the HA. We know the pH is 7.00. We found from the, our previous answer, our pKa2 was 6.07. And so we subtract that. That gives us 0.93. We're going to do the opposite of log, which is 10 to the 10 to the 0.93. And that gives us an A minus to HA, a conjugate base to weak acid ratio of 8.5. And this is the 2024 AP Chemistry exam for your response question number two. Hope this helped. I'll be uh, look at all my other problems on mysteryaden.com or on my YouTube channel. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.